Most of my videos are shot on just one occasion. One day of the week over a few hours at most. This one is a bit different. It's jumbled. You'll see different pieces of equipment, many different locations, all done on various different days of the week. So, it's going to be a bit jumbled up, but I thought that it was worth putting it all in a single video. And it's particularly for those who are potentially interested in getting onto 23 centimeters or the 1296 megahertz amateur band. I can't transmit there yet, I can only receive, but even if you can only receive, then it's quite, a, quite an interesting band to listen into. And it helps here in Melbourne that we have a beacon on 1296 530 megahertz and that can be heard all around Melbourne at different locations. There's also an active group of operators that are using 23 centimetres, both SSB, FM, also digital modes, and you'll sometimes hear them talking on other frequencies like 70 centimetres. So you can often hear people pre-arranging contacts on 23 centimetres. Uh, this is the new antenna I've built for receiving. I'll just uh, give you a bit of a close-up. It's a bi-quad. I'll have the link in the video description. Basically a refined version of the antenna that I described in my recent last 23cm video. Except it's a little bit more refined than the other one. The other one just used kitchen foil. This one is a bit more permanent. You might enjoy the soap dish there. That's the best I could find in a shop to make a right angle mount. And that right angle mount was so it could be put on this thing here, which is a originally a mount to go on a bicycle to hold a video camera. I have done a video while using that when I was riding the bike, but it was very bumpy, so I thought, well, I wasn't going to use it for anything else, so I've used most of it to form this mount. So if you were to have a vertical pole through here, then you can go like this. Uh, this is horizontally polarized that is vertically polarized that's important because you do have quite a lot of cross polarization loss so it's important that you get the polarization right and if people are switching between SSB and FM on 23 centimeters normally SSB is horizontal FM is vertical it's important that you can easily change the polarization of your antenna so, I've got no feed line. This is the USB, the RTLSDR.com. Um, you might be able to see the writing on it. And the USB just plugs into a laptop with SDR Sharp. So with this, this will pick up signals at 1300 megahertz. And as you'll hear, it's a surprisingly good performer. And then there's almost no feed line loss here because it's only about three or four centimeters between the RTL and the antenna. So really simple, yet it's got a few dB of gain, maybe it's eight or nine dB, and this is perfectly fine as a receiving station on 23 centimeters. I should mention that it does drift a bit. I find that it might start off low and it might drift up to maybe 10 kilohertz in about 30 minutes or so, so it's not the most stable. Um, there might be better versions of this that are more stable with the TCXO. So just bear in mind that if you've got a beacon that might not be on frequency or more likely your receiving thing is off frequency, have a look at the spectrum display, see where the spikes are in case you are off frequency. Uh, you might just be badly tuned and not be able to hear anything when the signal's actually there. So frequency drift is something to be very aware of with microwaves, particularly with cheaper equipment like this. Nevertheless, its selectivity seems to be pretty good, sensitivity seems to be fine, so a good starter setup for receiving microwave signals on 23 centimeters. You might recall from my earlier video, I went to a site in Hawthorne, which is not too far from the VK3 RXX beacon, maybe four or five kilometers, and I was able to get good reception of that 
with this receiving setup, even with not much height. So no big surprises there, but when you're starting in microwaves, you need to start somewhere where you can be almost assured of success. So got reception there. Then I moved a bit further away, went into the city, into Flagstaff Gardens. Um, amongst lots of tall buildings, it is a high point in the city, but it's not directly line of sight to the beacon. Still, I was able to hear the beacon well by reflecting it off tall buildings, so I was very pleased with that. And it also happened to coincide with a monthly microwave activity day. And so there were people on hilltops, some at hilltops, some at home, getting onto various bands from 23 centimeters and up. And so I was able to have a couple of cross-band contacts. I can't transmit on 23 centimeters, but I can receive, so it was great to have cross-band contacts with VK3BCU and VK3IK. Now, I'll have video footage of that in this video, but because the camera was such a long way from the computer, you'll hardly be able to hear their audio, but trust me, it was almost a fully quieting signal. Some of the distances were like 20, maybe uh, for the first station I worked, VK3BCU, maybe 20 kilometers and maybe nearer to 40 kilometers for VK3IK. So both of them, I was able to hear quite good signals. And that was with the makeshift antenna. The, oh, I was using this bit as the double quad loop, but the reflector was just kitchen aluminum foil, and it was difficult to hold it all straight. I've since refined it. So later in the video, you'll see examples of where I went to Oliver's Hill, which is a very high point near Frankston. That's much further away from the beacon than my previous tests. Anyway, you'll hear how strong I was getting the signal from the beacon. And finally, had another cross-band contact with VK3FS down at Mount Martha. Again, I was on 70 centimetres using the cheap handheld and listening on 23 centimetres. And as you'll hear, signals are surprisingly good and I had a better recording quality that time. So you'll hear how good strong signals can sound on 23 centimetres. And in all these cases with other stations, I was receiving FM. FM not quite as good as SSB for the really weak signal stuff, but it's a bit more tolerant with frequency stability. Um, so if your receiver drifts a bit, it could drift five kilohertz. And for SSB, you're completely out of the pass band. Whereas with FM, you might still hear it. So enjoy this video. It's a bit fragmented, but if you're thinking of getting into 23 centimeters, this might give you a small flavor of what to expect with the crudest and simplest of equipment, at least for receiving. If you're moving it that way, I'm bouncing it off one of the buildings. There we are, bouncing it off that, and that's giving a much stronger reception than if I was to aim it more directly. This is about minus 70, whereas at the other place it was more like minus 50. But still well above the noise. I'm just doing home station today. I can do um, 1.2, 2 2.4 and hopefully 3.4. I've got 3.4 running here at the moment. VK, VK3 BCU, VK3 Y, listening on VK3IK, VK3YE, uh, Chris, five and three, five and three, over.
I'm on the ground in front of my house and I could just sometimes hear the signal. You can probably see the spike on the screen. Here I'm at Oliver's Hill, just past Frankston for those who know Melbourne. It's a high point with great views of the bay. It is foggy, but will be a fine day later on. And what you're seeing here is a homemade bi quad antenna with reflector for 23 centimetres using a few common household bits and pieces or at least items not intended for radio um, you can just see the antenna the element there I'll just turn it around and there's an RTL SDR which is the receiver USB connection right here where I'm holding to form the right angle is a soap dish bought from a two dollar shop want it to be non-metallic and that just provides a convenient mounting bracket and just below it it's got a swivel mount that is so I can go horizontal or vertically polarized as that makes a big difference but anyway it's a bicycle camera mount it's a bit of reflection but that's the reception of the VK3 RX beacon as you can see, an excellent signal from here. Getting a good signal with the beacon, so we'll now try a crossband contact. So 1294000 FM is what I'll try. And we're now monitoring 1294. So we'll try it with VK3 FS. So that's our look at 23 centimetres. Um, I'm not on air, I can only receive, but it's been a lot of fun, and especially if you've got hills nearby, or even if you're not very high up, if you're near a river bank or, or an ocean or a bay, a sea, then even that can give you some good locations for receiving microwave signals. And if there's a location that is difficult for you to reach directly and there's tall buildings let's say that both of you can see a city or some other tall structure then you've got the potential to bounce signals off those buildings and be able to make contact or hear signals on 23 centimeters so fascinating band band that many amateurs haven't necessarily explored very much so i'd really encourage you to do so the best way to start is to get your own genuine RTL SDR. For more information or to order, click on the link. Then all you'll need is the SDR Sharp software and the antenna 
like I've described in this video.